Thailand. Maybe not the first country you think about when it comes to watches, but there's a new micro brand coming out of Thailand called Wise Watches, and they're giving you, I think, a pretty good reason to consider it. Now, we all know the term affordable luxury is kind of a misnomer. You can't really get a luxury watch for an affordable price. It sort of defies the entire definition of what a luxury watch is. But for under $600 after discounts, the Wise Adamascus AD8 does a pretty good job of giving you the feel of a luxury timepiece. Let's check it out. Hey guys, welcome back to Just The Watch. My name is Dave, I live in Japan, and I love to collect affordable watches. Today we're taking a look at a 200 meter dive watch from Wise Watches out of Thailand. This is a dive watch that I think would fit very much into sort of the dress diver or desk diver category. The fact that they bundle this with two straps and the strap that it comes installed on is a leather strap, I think really tells you that. This is meant to be a watch that makes a great everyday wear piece, something that you could easily wear with a suit and tie, but also has the technical specifications to take scuba diving if you wanted to. And that's really my favorite kind of dive watch because I'm not a scuba diver. This watch is powered by a Miyota 9015 movement. It's the first watch I've ever seen that features 904L stainless steel, and the loom on this watch is out of this world. If you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you know that I love loom on watches, and I've been testing and figuring out ways to measure how potent loom is. And this watch jumped ahead to the top spot on my rankings. It has the best loom that I've ever tested. Now, this watch was provided to me for free by Wise, which is why you saw the paid promotions flag at the beginning of this video. However, other than the watch itself, I did not receive any compensation, nor did Wise have any input into the content of this review. With that out of the way, let's jump into the dimensions and specifications and take a look at what they're giving you here. The Adamascus AD8 has a case diameter of 41 millimeters. We've got 20 millimeter lugs, 47.5 millimeters lug to lug, a pretty slim 11.7 millimeters tall, so just under 12 millimeters there. 200 meters of water resistance. You're getting sapphire crystal on both the front and the back with AR coating. Inside you have a Miyota 9015 automatic movement. They have this one listed at a retail price of $830. However, it has been on sale for $599 for quite some time on their site. And if you go to their site, they immediately pop up offering you a $20 off coupon if you sign up for their newsletter. So at the time of this review, it's fairly easy to pick this one up for $579. Now, if you can pick this watch up for $579, I think that the specs that we've looked at so far definitely justify that price. However, there are a couple of other technical features of this watch that make this an even better value. Most significantly, this watch features a 904L stainless steel case. Almost any other watch that you're gonna purchase in this price point is gonna feature 316L stainless steel. 904L is generally considered kind of a more luxury alternative to 316L, and that's largely because this is the kind of steel that Rolex uses in their stainless steel watches. The main differences between the two is that 904L stainless steel, again, the steel used on this watch, has a higher resistance to corrosion, which makes it ideally suited to being used in salt water. And it will take a higher mirror-like shine when you polish it up. And Wise really took full advantage of this by giving this watch a fully polished mirror-like shine to the entire case. This is a little bit of an unusual choice for a dive watch, given that there's a high likelihood you're gonna pick up scratches, but it does look great when you first get this watch out of the box. Other impressive features is that this watch features a ceramic bezel insert, and the BGW9 loom that they use on this is an outstanding application. So when you take all of these technical features into consideration, that kind of shows you where they're getting this $830 retail price from. However, if you can pick it up after discounts for $579, I think you're getting a really good deal out of this, just based on specs alone. However, this watch does much more than just give you good specs for the money. Both the design and build quality on this watch are excellent as well. Now Wise packaged this watch with two watch straps and both of them are blue to match the color of the dial. The strap that is installed with the watch when you open it up is a high quality leather watch strap and then they also give you an optional FMK rubber watch strap. Now both of these watch straps are really high quality. However, my preference was definitely for the rubber strap of the two and I'll get to why that is in a minute. 
I had a little bit of an issue with the leather strap, but I think the fact that they kit this one out on a leather strap tells you something about the sort of design angle that they're going for with this. Leather watch straps on dive watches can be a little bit of a controversial thing because leather is not waterproof and dive watches are supposed to be meant for going in the water. However, we all know that dive watches are one of the most versatile watches that you can have. Nowadays, it's perfectly acceptable to wear a dive watch with a suit and tie. And I think that's kind of what Wise is going for here. Again, I feel like Wise's goal here is to give you the feel of a luxury watch at an attainable price. And I think they've done a great job at that here. This is a watch that is incredibly elegant and it features a very striking visual design. It's also incredibly slim at under 12 millimeters tall. This is the kind of watch that you can easily wear every day. It'll even fit under the cuff of most of your dress shirts if you wanna wear it in a formal situation. And a 200 meter dive watch that is that slim with this level of refinement is really difficult to find nowadays in this you know, kind of price range that they're operating in. In looking at the design, there's a couple of things that really jump out at me as being exceptional in this watch. The case design is both exceptional and unique. The dial texture is amazing, and I think that's gonna be probably the feature that's gonna jump out at most people. And I also think they did a great job on the hands and markers on this watch. Every aspect of this watch feels like it was really well thought out. I don't feel like there was any kind of this like cookie cutter design where they're pulling parts from, you know, just different pre-existing things. It feels like everything that went into this watch is something that they conceived and designed and built. Everything is interesting, it's well finished, and the design just meshes together so well. So let's look at some of these aspects in a little bit more detail. Okay, now my favorite design element of this watch I think is the case, but we gotta talk about this dial first, because that's the thing that really jumps out at you when you look at this watch. This watch features a textured dial that as near as I can tell is completely original. I haven't seen any other watch do anything quite like this. The watch features a crosshatch pattern that appears to be either embossed or engraved onto the dial. In some ways, it kind of reminds me of a mat made out of reeds or bamboo. Whatever it is they were going for, the dial is absolutely beautiful. You're going to see really different patterns depending on the angle that the light hits the dial. Sometimes it will look fairly subdued and flat, but at other angles you get a tremendous level of depth and detail coming out of this dial. It's really great to see a micro brand come up with a dial like this that is different from your typical sand texture or matte texture or sunburst texture, and yet isn't like a crazy kind of distracting mess. This is one of the few instances where I've seen a micro brand be able to kind of replicate the level of originality and quality that Seiko puts into their dial work. I also love the color of this blue dial. It's kind of a dark, rich, saturated blue which again is just really beautiful overall. And with that dial, Wise has paired a handset and set of markers that is both unique and very well executed. So many watches go for kind of the same shaped markers or you know similar shaped hands, but once again, Wise is injecting a level of originality into these choices and they're able to come up with something that looks interesting that again is not over the top, it's very elegant and just really meshes perfectly with the rest of the design. The hour hand in particular has kind of a unique segmented look to it with kind of a bold hexagon on the tip of it. The hour markers are applied, highly polished, and beveled. Their layout is highly legible and allows for easy orientation of the watch. You get double bars at 12 o'clock, a single bar at 9 and 3 o'clock. At 6 o'clock, you've got a 6 o'clock date with kind of a half marker there. This helps maintain the symmetry of the watch, but also allows the six o'clock to have a marker after dark so that you can still see the loom on it. And all of the other markers kind of look like squares, but they have a very subtle point to the, uh, the inner tips of them, which again, just kind of gives it a little bit more visual interest than you would get if you just went with a standard square shaped marker. And going along with the case, everything here on the dial, all the markers and hands are done in a high polish and they're finished really nicely. So this is definitely a watch with a lot of light play on it. You have all of the design elements and specifications of a purpose-built dive watch, but with the slimness and sparkle of something that you would get primarily from a dress watch. And that's especially evident in the fully polished case as well. And the polishing work that they've done in this case is really amazing. It's some of the best that I've seen on any watch that I've reviewed. Really is a mirror shine. Like you can literally see reflections of everything in the case. However, more than the case finishing, the case shape and design is something that I really love in this watch. The mid case is incredibly thin. The lugs have a gorgeous curve to them and are slender and kind of just reach out from the case. And the lugs and case have really beautiful beveling done. 
with so many facets on it that it almost looks like a smooth curve going around the, uh, the side of the case. So because there's so many different flat surfaces on the case, you get light and reflections from your environment at all different angles, and it's just a really beautiful, cool look. Now topping everything off, you have a black ceramic bezel insert. This is done in a high polish black with very crisp engravings for the numbers that are filled with loom. And then rising out of that, you have just a beautiful double domed sapphire crystal. These elements add just another layer of kind of shine and depth and interest, giving the entire watch a very luxurious look and feel. Given that this watch is on the upper end of the price spectrum for a micro brand dive watch featuring a Miyota 9015 movement, you would expect a really good build quality as well, and thankfully Wise doesn't let us down in that area either. Crown operation and threading is very smooth, winding and time setting all function wonderfully. And the bezel action is very good as well. The alignment is good. The clicks are very defined and precise with a little bit higher tension than I usually see in a lot of these dive watches. And my preference would be for the tension to be a little bit lighter on the bezel. This feels just a little too stiff to me, but it is a very confident, very solid feeling bezel. There's no back play and it's not so tight that it's difficult to actually grip or turn. Next, we got to talk about the loom because it's crazy. But first, let me ask you guys to check out my website. If you go to justthewatch.com, I am selling t-shirts like this one here that you see me wearing. This is a turtle with a turtle for a shell. I've got a lot of really cool kind of watch themed t-shirts and recently just decreased the pricing on all the shirts. So make sure you go check that out, pick one up and help support the channel. But now let's move on and talk about the loom on this watch. So the loom here kind of took me by surprise. I, I immediately noticed that it was bright, but what I didn't pick up on at first is just how long it was going to last for. The Adamascus AD8 features BGW9 loom, which gives a very strong blue glow in the dark, and in the light you get a very crisp white look to the, the loom paint. And this just looks so great against the dark blue dial and the black bezel. You get a really great contrast, just a really crisp look. After dark, the initial glow is very strong. Like I would always notice this when I was walking from outdoors into indoors or driving through tunnels in my car. But where this thing really shines is in the extended longevity. I put this through my J-Score testing system and the first time I ran it, it came out with a score of 20, which for reference is two points higher than the Axios Ironclad, which was previously my highest tested watch. Now I was using a new camera and reconfiguring things. So I ran this watch through that same test again, directly against the Ironclad. And on the second run, it actually came out with a score of 21. Now, if you're wondering why the Ironclad only scored 16 on this run, it's because loom does tend to degrade over time. And I've had the Ironclad for a few years now. But with a score of 21, that makes the Wise Adamascus my new loom champion. So if you're looking for a watch that can glow all night long, Wise has you covered here as well. Now this watch is not perfect. There are a few areas that I think could stand to use a little bit of improvement. So let's run through what those were. First off, as mentioned before, I had an issue with the leather strap. The leather strap is very high quality and I really enjoyed wearing the watch on it. However, it features two floating keepers. So those little loops that are meant to keep the tail of the strap in place, both of those are movable. Typically one of them is stitched in place while the second keeper is allowed to move which is what they should have done here. The problem I ran into is with both of those loops being movable, they would eventually work themselves loose and then the tail of the watch strap would start flapping around and getting caught on things. And primarily for that reason, I wore this watch mostly on the rubber strap, which is also an excellent strap. The rubber strap also features two movable keepers, but rubber is a much different material than leather and it tends to stay in place much better. So I didn't have that same issue about the, the edge of the, the tail of the strap coming loose. This watch is very shiny. Everything about this watch is shiny. And so it's gonna pick up fingerprints and smudges very easily you're probably gonna find yourself polishing this one a lot and rubbing it. That's sort of the price you pay for going with a polished ceramic bezel, a fully polished case, a sapphire crystal. So know you'll be dealing with that if you pick this watch up. Along those lines, the case is definitely gonna be picking up some scratches as you go. 904L is a great material to make a watch out of, but it is no more scratch resistant than typical stainless steel. And when you have a fully polished mirror shine like this on a watch, scratches are gonna be pretty noticeable. Finally, at this price range, I think I would have hoped that they would have included a metal bracelet instead of going the two strap route. I think that would have given you just a little bit better value and made that sort of higher end price a little bit easier to swallow for people who are looking for a bargain. You might also argue that at this price range, you would expect a Swiss movement, but yeah, it's kind of on the border there. I don't think it's unreasonable to put the Miyota 9015 in here, and I'm a big fan of the Miyota 9015. 
So price for microbrand divers is a little bit on the high end, but not unreasonable by any stretch. And this watch is giving you a lot of very unique things that you don't find in many other microbrand divers. The slimness of the case, the design elements that really set it apart, the overall finishing and just the quality that this watch exudes make it a real joy to wear and something that I think is definitely worth looking into. But let me know what you guys think of the watch down below in the comments. Always love to hear from you. That's gonna wrap it up for the video today. If you're interested in affordable watches, if you're trying to build a collection or just trying to figure out what's out there, definitely invite you to subscribe to the channel. Try and put out videos along these lines roughly once a week. And don't forget to check out the t-shirt store where you can get this one here. All right guys, that'll do it for today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you later. Bye.